Hello and welcome to another video while I'm cooking. Uh, again, this will be incredibly uh, kind of off the cuff and not rehearsed because I don't have time to rehearse them or I don't particularly care about the quality of them um, in the sense of, which is quite interesting considering what we're about to talk about. Um, but I have food to make and then eat. But today we'll be talking about, um, I've got my whiteboard, perfectionism, okay? We're gonna be talking a little bit about why certain mental health issues um, and personality traits aren't always bad, um, and the kind of the benefits, you know, for want of a better word, um, to some of them. So I'm gonna talk specifically about perfectionism, but why me, for example, having obsessive compulsive disorder, why that, can be considered useful for a lot of, in a lot of ways. Um, obviously there's downfalls, no one's saying it's easy because it's not. Um, but knowing uh, and being aware of the traits um, can help you channel your energies better, I believe, um, and can make, uh, well, they make you who you are. But for example, um, I'm very obsessive about cleanliness, um, for example. Um, in the sense of not touching people um, because I don't like it. And as a result, I don't get ill very often. Um, and, and when I get ill, it's kind of like I get a runny nose and that's about it really. I don't really get debilitating illness. Um, I didn't get COVID as far as I'm aware. Um, I didn't get any symptoms of COVID anyway. Um, so that's a benefit. Um, Obviously, as a result, it means that I don't have as much of a physical relationship with people. Um, but, you know, A, I don't care, for one, which is useful. Um, and B, you know, it's not the end of the world, I guess, but that could be seen as a negative to some people. Some people obviously won't be able to live without that. Um, but I can, which is fine. But we're going to talk a little bit about perfectionism because it's probably an easier thing to grasp rather than me going straight in and saying, oh, the benefits of, you know, a specific mental illness is this. Um, this is a little bit easier. Perfectionism is a, is a personality trait, really. It's a characteristic of, it's a characteristic of obsessive compulsive disorder, but it's seen in a lot of people as well. Um, a lot of people with autism um, can have perfectionist traits. Now, we all know what perfectionism means essentially wanting something to be done 100% perfectly um, and being in great distress if something isn't perfect or done to the way they deem as perfect. Now, two little bullet points. Perfectionism is situation specific. So I always give the example of my uni work was I was very perfectionist about. But that doesn't mean I'm perfectionist about literally everything in my life. So those that watch my YouTube channels, my YouTube channel won't and watch the videos of my weekly training, know that I am not perfectionist about that and I do not care about that. <laughs> if there's mistakes in it, I just post it anyway because it doesn't bother me. I'm not passionate about it at all. Um, you know, but I was passionate about uni work and education and I'm passionate about training. Um, <clears throat> so these are the things in coaching. So these are the things I'm more um, perfectionist about, but that doesn't mean that, you know, if I see, you know, a whiteboard with a spelling mistake on that, I have to um, break someone's neck to change it. Uh, these are stereotypes, and it would be good if we could all be less ignorant to them. So, so it's situation specific. With that, it's also adaptable. So, it's linked. Perfectionism and passion are linked quite closely. As someone's passion dwindles, um, their perfectionism levels usually drop as well. So. It, for any one specific domain, for example, let's say education for me, if it's education for something I don't really care about or I'm not passionate about, then my levels of perfectionism would be a lot lower. So when I was doing my masters, for example, it was in a subject that I really cared about and thus my levels of perfectionism were a lot higher. If I was to suddenly do a masters in, you know, I don't know, archeology, span in essence, in, in honesty, I don't care at all, really. 
you know, bones are cool and that, but I'm not that uh, fussed. So I wouldn't have, my levels of perfectionism would not be as high um, if, if present at all. So now we have like an overview of what perfectionism is and how it can change and how it's not just one thing and it's not just for all things ever. We're going to go over a little bit about why there's a lot. I see a lot of people or little posts mainly on Instagram saying perfectionism is the number one killer of, you know, um, uh, perfectionism is the number one reason why people aren't successful. Um, this is absurd for one. This is an absolute farce. Um, it's a reason it can be, uh, but channeled correctly. Uh, people who talk about how bad perfectionism is. Um, obviously probably have not had it or um, have perfectionism with very low levels of passion so an example of that would be if I had a high level of perfectionism for something I wasn't that passionate about which is it's quite rare um, like, like I said they usually go hand in hand not always obviously they usually go hand in hand if for example I had this high level of perfectionism about my uni work in my archaeology masters but I have no passion, I don't care about it, then I might never start this essay because I'm scared of failing, because I also don't care. Whereas with me, with the the, the stuff I was doing, the mental health stuff, my psychology masters, I wanted to do all of them because I was interested. Simple as that. I had the passion for it, and thus started. So if someone says perfectionism is bad, not only are they wrong, um, they're also ignorant to both sides of the story. Now it can be bad, that's absolutely true, um, it can be debilitating, but at the same time, um, what I mean, a what can't, you know, what isn't, but also b, you know, without perfectionism, we wouldn't have incredible works of art or you know pieces of music, you know, most of the music that you listen to now, well, not now because it's shit, but most of the you know good music, uh, let's say from the eighties and before, was um, you know might have been a result of artists or composers if we're talking back in the day of very very obsessive perfectionist people so there are benefits there are drawbacks like literally everything in life um but yeah so some of the characteristics of so frost i i know this because this is my dissertation by the way so you don't need to know these names um as they are scientifically written but a guy called frost came up with a scale um the MPS multi-dimensional perfectionism scale um, and he, he later adapted it to sport which is useful but he found that perfectionism is is made up of six subcategories two that are positive and four that are, uh, are not very not as positive these are linked with the positive and negative sides of passion for those that are interested um, but the two and I'm gonna go through some examples maybe give some examples of me and it just helps you understand a little bit better and we want to try to not have these levels of perfectionism and have more of these levels of perfectionism, okay? So I'll put it in green and red. Everyone has every single one, but in different levels. So it's a spectrum. Every single subcategory is a spectrum. Preferably, we can be fully on this side and not on this side. So the two good ones, the two positive ones, personal standards and organization. So personal standards, uh, a lot of them are self-explanatory, to be honest, but personal standards is the standards you set for yourself. So if I'm... For example, if perfectionism for me, in, in me, would be, I want to make this lift, let's say this snatch, and I want the technique to be absolutely perfect. Now, yes, there, there will be issues with that if you're the kind of person who never wants to put on any weight because of that. Um, you're obviously, you'll ne never get stronger, and you'll never essentially face failure. But 99% of the time, I think it is very useful to have that level. And as a result, my technique... It's not, I don't think, it, I personally don't think it's great, but I think it's terrible, but people tell me all the time it's unbelievable. Um, I think it's horrendous, but that's because I have such high levels of perfectionism for my personal standard of technique. So it has obviously improved a lot um, since I started, but if people tell me all the time it's fantastic, um, I think it's horrendous. But I think that has actually benefited me because I have looked at every single little thing. I've had so many issues in my eyes with technique that I've worked on a lot of different things. And as a result, this is kind of not the end product, but this is the current product. Secondly, organization. How you organize your time, how you organize 
um, again, we could say training, but um, so for me, I'm very perfectionist in the sense of setting out, you know, the day before what I'm going to do that day and set my bag and meal prepping and, and as a result, so let's say I'm going to stick with a training example throughout because that's something I am perfectionist about. I will train, not much would have to happen, a big thing would have to happen for me not to train because I'm so organised and prepared for every single day um, of training. Uh, now, some people might not be, I don't know. And they might not plan very thoroughly what's going on in their, you know, the next day. And when life happens, that they might not be able to handle that. They might not be able to cook. Um, and obviously that is an issue if it stops them, um, you know, if it stops them training and then has a knock-on negative effect on them. So they're the two good ones, quite um, self-explanatory. The next one is concern over mistakes. Now this is the classic uh, concern over mistakes. This is the classic one. This is your level of essentially self-worth is linked to how perfect you can be. So if this is the kind of thing where, now again, I have this in a high level. I don't like making mistakes for the things I'm passionate about. For example, in schoolwork, I would hate getting, getting any marks wrong in exams. Now, as a result, from A level onwards, when I stopped being um, a dick, was I did very well in exams because I did not want to fail. And I wanted 100%. And some of the times I got 100% because of that. Um, so that served me really well. But when it's on the negative side, concern over mistakes is that's the kind of perfectionist that those Instagram posts are talking about where we don't want to start a task because we're scared of getting something wrong and making a mistake. Now that is obviously debilitating. We know that, um, that makes sense. Parental criticism and parental expectations. So it doesn't have to be parents, but you know, maybe teachers or figures, you know, above us who we look up to who give criticism or expectation uh, or have negative expectations or have expectations that are so high that it, um, stresses out now one of the things you can do if you've had this from a child is obviously go back in time and get better parents but a better thing might be you know a more achievable outcome rather than getting better parents might be to try to work on seeing your getting rid of some plastic my glasses um trying to see or view your goals and whatnot as um, an expectations on yourself rather than, um, so we want self-imposed expectations and self-imposed um, criticism, I guess. It can be constructive, doesn't have, criticism doesn't have to be bad, um, rather than um, peer-reviewed or peer-imposed um, criticism and expectations. The final one is called doubts o about or doubts over actions. So now another word for that is, is is anxiety, um, having a doubt that, you know, something might go wrong, similarly, similar to concern over mistakes, but it's a little bit more whole, um, a little bit more holistic than, than that. Uh, doubt over actions might be, um, doubts. So just having general doubts about yourself, um, you know, rather than, not necessarily, oh, I don't want to do this because I'm going to make a mistake, but it might be, I don't want to do this um, X, Y, Z thing um, because other people will laugh at me, other people will think I'm terrible. Uh, not a, yes, I might fail, but there's, it's a more kind of holistic than that. Um, so we want to try and get out of, uh, this is for you, Kira, who likes my uh, skills in the kitchen. Uh, so I'm going to probably make another video explaining a little bit more kind of how to get out of the red and into the green kind of style video. But this is a good general overview of perfectionism, why perfectionism is not a terrible thing and should I actually think should be cherished, cherished and um, sought after. But um, there are negatives and you've got to understand the downside. So I might make a second video if people are interested. If people are interested, um, as always, let me know if you've got any questions, send comments and whatnot, that's fine. If it's a question, as always, you can repost and whatnot. But yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday.